Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll Channel. Today I'm doing something I haven't done in quite a while, and that's play Pioneer. I'm actually pretty excited about this. I haven't played the format basically since uh, Pro Tour in Phoenix back in before quarantine time, so a long time ago. This is a donation request from Richard, and Richard wants me to crack on with Jeskai Ascendancy. So if you go back over a year on the channel at this point, Jeskai Ascendancy was the first Pioneer deck I ever played on the channel. It was a lot of fun. And so I actually do have some experience doing this. So Richard's build of the deck has four mentor in the main, which is pretty sweet. That's just like, that gives you twice as many payoffs, like three mana ways to go nuts with all your spells. And I do like that. My build had mentor in the sideboard, but I don't mind it in the main at all. Richard has chosen to go off with Ascendancy by using Song of Frailies and token creatures. So Song is uh, until your next turn, creatures you control gain tap, add one mana of any color. And Forbidden Friendship makes a haste creature so you can go off. It can tap for mana uh, the same turn that you play it as long as you play the song after the friendship. And... He's got a Fey of Wishes package, which is also pretty cool. Uh, you can just make lots of mana, then decide what you need to win. Or if you're not going off, you can get something medium, like Heroic Reinforcements, and just pivot to a beatdown plan. So uh, I, there's a lot I do like about this main deck. One thing I don't like so much is that Song of Frailies requires you to have creatures in play already when you play it. Uh, like, if you play Song and then play Forbidden Friendship later in the turn, that creature won't tap for mana. Only creatures that were in play when you played Song. So you basically have to have Jeskai Ascendancy already in play, and then also 4 mana, and your 1-1 one, one haste can't die to get anywhere off Ascendancy. And I'm not a big fan of that. But we are in luck, because there's a card that does all of this by itself, and that's Sylvan Awakening. Three mana sorcery until your next turn. All lands you control become 2-2 elemental creatures with reach, indestructible, and haste. They're still lands. So you don't need any creatures in play at all. You just play this, your lands activate. You don't have to worry about removal because they're indestructible. And then your lands will grow from the ascendancy and you'll eventually be able to attack with three to five enormous creatures. And all of them untap when you play spells. So it should be pretty easy to shred through the deck. So I'm going to add this immediately. Sorry, Song of Frailies. And now that we're not playing Song of Frailies, Forbidden Friendship isn't necessary, and we could play more cantrips. So I'm going to get Anticipate in there. It's another two-mana spell, just digs for our payoffs. And Dig Through Time is a better delve spell for the Jeskai Ascendancy combo, but Treasure Cruise is a better delve spell for the sideboard plan where you're basically Jeskai Delver. Uh, you have uh, Sprite Dragons, Heroic Reinforcements, Monastery Mentor, and you're just off the combo entirely. And like when you're comboing, finding specific cards is more important. When you're just that uh, aggro tempo deck, just having more cards is more important. So that's kind of a split. Though I do think that five is too many of this effect. So I'm going to shave one Got another crash through in here. Just something with more velocity. And now that we have Sylvan Awakening that gives things haste anyway, we don't really need Expedite. So I think that this will be a better build of the same deck, and we're going to have more success this way. So let's go try it out, see how this goes. But I'm on the draw here. I'm going to keep this. So my opponent has revealed Luris as a companion. So my hand casts Ascendancy. It also uh, has some cantrips, has fairy. And this is a just a perfectly serviceable opening hand. Opponent's deck looks like it's going to come out pretty quick. 
Uh, I'm probably going to play Fae of Wishes in blocking mode this turn. Any deck with a Zergo Bell Striker in it, I want a 1 4 and play against them. We light up the stage. They didn't have a land drop and they missed on light up the stage, so that's pretty sweet. Great news, everybody. All right, and Fae of Wishes should deny the next light up the stage from connecting. So if they get this Eidolon in play, I am in trouble. Yeah, Faye will stop this light up the stage from lighting up the stage. If they have a burn spell to finish off my fairy, that's fine, but I don't want to get my stage lit up. Yeah, whatever. All right, not bad. I could have been much, much worse. So I can strategic planning and crash through this turn, or I could play Ascendancy. So I think that I want to play Ascendancy first because that doubles the amount of cards I'm going to see off all the crash throughs and the adds a card to strategic planning and filtering away these mana confluence is probably something I want to do. So blue, red, white. All right, let's fire it up. Oh, them missing on that light up the stage was clutch. That's a good one to find. Okay, so I think I want to start with Crash Through because if that finds Sylvan Awakening, I can just win this turn. Wait, that's not true. I need one extra mana. So Sylvan Awakening is not going to help this turn anyway. Strategic Planning will put one, two, three cards in my graveyard. Uh, crash Through, or... Er, for including the planning crash through will put yeah so i should be able to treasure cruise this turn if my math is correct which it's frequently not so <laughs> don't be surprised if I, I beef this uh yes discard one of these mana confluences okay so stomping ground treasure cruise mana confluence Do I want a second cruise? Am I going to be able to cruise that far? I'm definitely not taking Confluence. Uh, stomping Ground. I actually think Stomping Ground's probably fine. I'm I'm not sure how many more turns this game is going to last. Like, if it goes more than two turns, Confluence would have been worse. But if it goes two turns or less, Confluence is better. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the loot makes 7. Yeah, so I can Wild Slash one of these creatures and then also... Yeah, I, I'll shock this in. So I can Wild Slash one of the creatures and then also Treasure Cruise this turn. I'll discard Steam Vents at this point. It looks like I didn't beef the math. Being at 11, though, against this deck with uh, Mana Confluence still around does make me nervous. I guess I don't know how much burst damage they're actually capable of producing from this position. I didn't find a Sylvan Awakening yet. I think that uh, land is still the scariest thing they could produce. Like, if they're stuck on one or zero spells per turn versus many. All right. Sylvan Awakening. Ugh. All right, so I'll start with Opt. That one's going to see the most cards. If I find Sylvan Awakening in these top three cards, I do win on the spot. Strategic planning, send that to the bottom. There it is. Okay. So, play my land and then float. What color do I want to float? Probably blue. Uh, blue. Blue. 
green. The second float doesn't matter, I only get one of these mana. So I just need to leave blue floating, and then I can go off. They are very dead here. I'm not going to need dig through time. Lands are creatures, now opt. All these spells, net, uh, four or five mana. Just anything that is a spell can stay. And uh, blue, blue, red, red. I'm not going to tap the mana confluence. I don't think I need to. But yeah, they're definitely dead. Then blue, blue, red, red again. Like, I don't think it matters if I anticipate versus crash through. Like, I have the mana to do all of it, and as long as it's another spell, it's fine. So, my hand was already lethal. It didn't really matter what order I sequenced those in. Alright, comboed them out. So, knowing that they are the deck that they are, does that do anything to my sideboard? Uh, Royal Scions is a very aggressive card. There's nothing particularly defensive here. Like Cyclonic Rift, uh, I don't think that's what I want to do. On the draw, Quench doesn't get Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Like Eidolon of the Great Rebel is the scariest card in their deck by a lot. I guess I could bring in some Sprite Dragons. And oh, but uh, Monastery Mentor does basically the same thing, which is invalidate the board, and Mentor does it better. So okay, I'm just gonna submit the same deck again. I, I think that trying to go over the top of them with combo is gonna be better than trying to out aggro them when they're the most dedicated aggro deck. They're playing Luris, for goodness sakes. All right, there, there he is. The monk with the plan. Uh, I do wish this hand had a removal spell in it. Uh, how dead am I if this doesn't work? Uh, I'm actually going to mulligan this. This is way too slow. All right, here we go. There's the wild slash and the Fey of Wishes. So I can uh, destroy a creature, then put a 1 4 into play. And I'm going to ship this, dig through time to the bottom. I don't think that's going to be relevant in time to matter. Or I guess another way to say that is if we get to a game state where it is relevant, then I'll have time to draw some cards. Zergo. All right, so I'm just going to wild slash that. Or no, I'm not. I lied. So. Like last game, they kept that light up the stage hand where if I pick off Zergo and they have the same sort of hand, they're screwed. However, if they have Eidolon, I'm screwed. So I'm going to save Wild Slash for Eidolon, and I guess I have to shock in the Steam Vents either way. Yeah, so they know I have Wild Slash now. There's no reason I would shock in a Steam Vents against them if I wasn't going to play a card. All right, so... Yeah, I, I I have to risk it. Like, Eidolon of the Great Rebel is too bad for me. Soulscar Mage. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. All right, I did end up taking uh, two damage I didn't need to there, but... Uh, Playing around what I could was worth it. I think this is a strategic planning turn. It's either planning or fey. Because with the, uh, the Soulscar Mage's ability, the minus one counters, I guess that doesn't really matter. 
Yeah, I'll just cast whatever I can to soak up damage for now. Though maybe that's actually wrong, because maybe I should be looking for another removal spell now, because they missed their land drop, and it's possible they have an Eidolon in hand, and they just didn't have the land to go with it. But playing Fey also denies light up the stage. Like, I lose this to a shock again, but I don't care. Alright, they're just on that one lander life. Right, so I could planning or anticipate, or I could opt plus cla crash through. I think I want a planning. That feeds the graveyard for the delve spells the best. So I already have a two mana spell. Do I want a third two mana spell or third one mana spell? Like I could triple spell one drops next turn or I could strategic planning plus opt. Oh no, I only have one blue. So if I want a double spell next turn, I should probably take crash through because I can anticipate plus crash through. So crash through is definitely the worst of these as far as selection goes. No, I am going to take the planning. And I do think saving two life is better for me than crashing through right now to see another card. So they can light up the stage this turn no matter what they do. All right. I do feel like this deck should have a Deafening Clarion or some sort of Wrath in it. All right, four cards in the graveyard, five, six, seven, not quite there. Strategic planning could get me there. If this finds a blue land, it did not find a blue land. So do I want Mentor to start turning the corner and winning this game? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm going to take Mentor. Crash through. Find me a blue land. All right, did it. Found a blue land. So I can treasure cruise right now, actually. Yeah, that's definitely better than opt. Then I can mentor next turn and play two spells right away, I hope. All right, oh, just got ascendancy. Second mentor. The blocking Soulscar Mage makes it more likely that Fae of Wishes dies, but it also saves me more damage. Yeah, like these, Fae would have only gone to uh, three damage on it, but I would have taken one more. I'm not sure which of those is actually better. All right, Mentor, show him who's boss. And I'm going to play a land tapped here. Just save that damage, because I can't double spell anyway. And I'd rather opt on their turn, so this is a 3-3 in combat. Uh-oh, they found the land. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to opt before blocks. Poros Charm. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to opt before blocks there. I just have one less block than I would like. And now that they have their second land, I'm probably dead pretty quick. All right, Sylvan, or Sylvan Awakening is a mana away from being helpful anyway. All right, so I should anticipate and look for removal, I guess. Though I'm probably dead to their hand regardless. This came together a little too late. But I did, in fact, find removal. All right, so they're at 14. So uh, this can be 5, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I'm a little short of actually killing them.
So, yeah, Boros Charm kills me. Everything kills me. It's a bad place to be. So I'll just attack for four and make them have it. I couldn't produce lethal this turn, so... They attack, I block. Yeah, I'll just let these blocks happen. So I want to anticipate in this... They, they'll probably just Boros Charm me in response. They're playing around counter spells, but I can't counter spell anyway. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Dead. Okay, so now, actually, I do think that I want the quenches in on the play. There's some sort of additional interaction once we get to the, the stable board burn part of the game. Do I still want to be comboing? Because I do think that comboing has a lot going for it. So, so what does this look like? If I bring in the Sprite Dragons, take out the entire combo, then I have Fae of Wishes, Sprite Dragon, Quench. That's still... Sprite Dragon is reliant on being set up first. Like, you need Sprite Dragon in play before you cast all your spells, versus Awakening and Jeskai Ascendancy, where you can cast all your spells and then figure it out later. Yeah, I don't think I want to try to out aggro the aggro deck, though having some number of quench does seem reasonable to me. Uh, maybe... Do I just start shaving one drop cantrips? Do I shave the two drop cantrips? Like, what is more important here? So... Or do I just ignore it? It's just like... That game was so close, and they played the entire game on one land. Like, and they never had a second land in game one either. So, like, how dead am I if they just have two lands in their opening hand for once? I mean, being on the play helps. I feel like I want some number of quench to at least dig through. So, uh, anticipate, crash through. Do I need all five delve spells in this matchup? All right, maybe a treasure cruise can go. And I'll bring in three quench. All right, I'm going to try that. This gives me another angle of interaction while still maintaining the combo. Okay, so I have a lot going on here. I have Ascendancy and Awakening. And I can opt quickly. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. This could be a turn 4 win. Yeah, so I have opt into planning. And then... So opt sees two, up to 2 cards. Planning sees another 3. I have 2 draw steps in between. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If the top 7 cards of my deck are 2 lands, then I can win on turn 4. Don't want that. Well, there's Quench. That's interesting. So I definitely need a planning here. Looking for a red source. Okay, I found one. Kinda. It's a slow one, but it's there. So now I need to draw an untapped red source to have my turn 4 win, or else I'm working towards a turn 5 win. Because Rootbound Crag does not trigger off of Hallowed Fountain. All right, they're lighting up the stage. Let's see no lands again. All right, no lands. Ah, uh, they had one anyway. They tricked me. Okay, uh, Rootbound Crag does trigger off Triome, so 
play the triome tapped then Bay of Wishes. I guess leaving up Quench. No, I, I think Faye is better. Like, leaving up Quench is my answer to an Eidolon this turn. But I feel like if they had Eidolon, they would have just shoved it into play. So I'm going to put my blocker in, try to absorb 4 damage. Yeah, so if they have the Shock or the Wild Slash, I take four and lose my Fairy. Alright, how's this going to look now? Okay, so there are five cards in my graveyard. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if they have like Boros Charm, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm still at three. If they double spell, if they have like Shock Shock, uh, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I am dead to a double spell. One, two, three, four, five cards in the graveyard. That's not enough. Yeah, this Rootbound Crag coming into play tapped actually cost me the game or else I would have been uh, going off this turn. But, uh, I guess I'll just play my cards. And I will have five mana next turn, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, that's still one short, oh no, the Sylvan, okay, so if I survive the turn, I can Sylvan Awakening, Treasure Cruise, go. And by go, I mean go off, not pass the turn, obviously. All right, here's this. Am I dead? Also, uh, Eidolon of the Great Rebel kills me here. Unless I draw Wild Slash. Holding up red mana might slow them down a little bit, but probably not. If they have the double spell, I just lose. Please cast Boros Charm. Uh, these are wizards. Oh, nice. Don't. Uh, all right, got to draw Wild Slash. So I take two from Sylvan Awakening. Treasure Cruise does not trigger. Then I have three looks. I'll be at eight. I have three more cards to dig for Wild Slash. Or I could just present lethal in combat. Oh, I take one from Mana Confluence too. All right, this is dangerous. Please don't have another land. Yeah, if they end up playing a land. Okay, now I don't have to worry about Wild Slash, Wizards, Lightning, etc. Okay, so, well, I've awkwardly drawn both of the quenches in a spot where anything other than quench would be great. So, white, or, I don't need white mana basically at all. All right, blue, blue, red, green, and I think I, I do have to tap the mana confluence, so, blue. And then Sylvan Awakening, I take damage off that. All right, so I go to seven. This is going to be really close. This is actually pretty exciting. I can loot away the quenches. Right, the squad is awake. Now I treasure cruise and untap them. I even get to keep a mana floating. I actually forgot about the loot when I was doing my delve math. All right. Uh, I'm going to discard the Sulfur Falls because I can cast and quench my own spell if I need to. Oh, this is getting ugly. 
So blue, blue, red, red. Not going to tap Mana Confluence. Mana Confluence is the difference between getting to cast three spells this turn or not. Yes, discard Mentor. Come on, deck. Help me out here. This guy Ascendancy. So that is a non-creature spell. It is another trigger. They're at 18, so... Oh, actually, this is lethal. Because if I ha attack with four five fives, they only have one blocker, so I'm just going to keep this on top. And that'll do. White, blue, red, red. I go to three, and then they lose. One for good luck. All right, so 5, 10, 15, 20. We have one blocker. Uh, I could give my things trample. Uh, I don't think gut shot's in the format. So I think holding up the quench makes more sense, though I don't think it matters at all. I'm also not even holding up quench. All right. And in for 20. GG. We beat an Eidolon. Comboed through an Eidolon. Very nice. On to the next round. All right, on the play here with a bunch of cantrips, or uh, I have Sylvan, Sylvan Awakening, cantrip, fairy. Uh, this is just a rock solid hand all around. My opponent is not a Luris deck this time. I'll take that as a gift. What are they, though? Oh. Okay, they came into play tapped. Oh god, Moto. Moto just hiccuped a little bit. There was like a second of lag that freaked me out. I thought I was going to lose my opt. So I can keep crash through, though bottoming crash through is the same as keeping ca crash through, except I don't have to spend a red mana. So I'm going to bottom it. Like once things are already in play, just being a spell is a feature, but right now that's not so much the case. I'm just going to play this tapped. I don't know what they're up to over there, and I'm not going to take two damage to play a Fae of Wishes if they're like some sort of mid-range deck. Oh, carries Ev. Okay, they are some sort of aggressive deck. Mox Amber. That's a legend. Alright, don't play a haste creature. Don't punish me. Oh god. You're just going off. Storm is four. Wow, Heart of Kieran. Good stuff. Okay, uh, I'm gonna play my Monastery Mentor and pass the turn. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Uh, my hand has become pretty awkward. Uh, I'm like glutted on payoffs with no cantrips enablers. And I got stomped. So this does not even come close to crewing Heart of Kirin. So that's good news. It does attack me for three though. Hopefully I draw. Like opt. Bonecrusher Giant does crew Heart of Kirin next turn. Actually, I hope I draw Jeskai Ascendancy. I'm not thinking greedy enough. <laughs> Pay me. White, blue, red. All right, hope I don't die this turn. And I need to draw one drop, actually. Like, I'm, I'm not there yet. All right, if I draw a one drop, or any one mana spell in my deck, I can win the game next turn. If not, I probably just play my two Fae of Wishes in 1-4 mode and hope I survive. Anathenza. That's cool. So they can bolster their Bone Caruster Giant if they have another mana source this turn. Oh, that's, that's cool. 
Uh, yep, that does attack for more. That's one more damage than just attacking with a Gregarious Ev. Math checks out. All right, deck, give me an opt. Give me a crash through. Help me out here. Shit. Okay, so... I think I play Steam Vents Tap. And then cast Fay of Wishes as blocking mode. And I, I'm going to save the other one. Because that's one of my spells. Uh, granted is one of my spells. If I uh, go off. Uh, okay. Wait, does that kill me? What, what just happened? So they can cast this, crew this, attack for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, I chump Heart of Cure and I'm at 2. Yeah, this is actually bad news all around. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm actually at one because they get to bolster. Yeah, I'm dead. That was my turn to, to do anything, and I didn't. This drew too many payoffs. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm at one with mana confluences as my mana sources. I can't win this game. Okay. Got wrecked. So, does anything change out of this sideboard? Our opponent is also an aggressive deck, but they're like a little bit bigger. Uh, the deck full of uh, stomps and similar. I'm not sure that I want to board into Sprite Dragon. I feel like my plan is already where it's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean like... The plan came together that game. It just uh, ended up a a one drop short. So uh, I'm I'm actually gonna recommit to this and like I bottomed that crash through that one time. But that crash through, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have drawn ascendancy on the turn that I did. So it's like yeah, it just didn't get enough time to set up. Basically, is what happened that game, uh, which is what aggro decks are trying to do. I think I do want Cyclonic Rift, just being able to bounce something like Heart of Kirin and buy a little bit of time sounds like it's worth doing. And I think Anticipate is the worst card. Uh, just It costs two and it doesn't fill the graveyard the way Strategic Planning does. I think I want all my Delve spells. Yeah, this is the deck I want to present. Okay, so I have, yeah, yeah, this is a keep. Ooh, these Clifftop Retreat and Hinterland Harbor with no lands of uh, land types are tough. So I'm going to play, I think, I'm going to play one of them. So I can strategic planning on turn two with the Mana Confluence. And I think I'd rather have the red mana in play. Oh, opponents on five. We take those. Yeah, I'm going to play Cliff Top Retreat. I'm going to planning on my turn. God, this is so awkward. I actually, uh, before the league started, I cut some of these check lands and added more shock lands than the the ri list richard originally gave me and it's still not quite the right balance all right let's make a plan all right sacred foundry turns on all of my check lands but wild slash actually uh pressures their plan a little bit I'm going to take Wild Slash. Like, that's why I played this red land first. So if I drew a red spell, I wouldn't have to take damage off Mana Confluence. And I have done that. So, yeah, I'm going to keep that one. 
I think by like last game buying one turn's worth of life would have won me the game or may have won me the game i should say don't actually know for sure in fact i'm pretty sure it would not have won me the game okay so i can crash through to draw and wild slash and that's two spells there are two cards for the the treasure cruise I definitely want to slash Anafenza. That's worth a lot of damage over the course of a game. Yeah, I'm going to crash through. Uh, I'm going to save the opt for later. Steam Vents will turn on all these check lands. And I can kill Anafenza right now. It cost me a damage off Mana Confluence, but she was about to attack for two and represent even more, like represent plus one damage for each creature that they cast for the rest of the game. All right, non-token. That would have been insane if Ragavan triggered Anafenza and just get to just pile on tokens every turn. But seems like R&D thought of that. All right, so that's actually the win next turn. So... I'm just going to play this and hope they don't have a disenchant effect in their deck. And I can play it in a way where I don't take any damage. Okay, so if they can destroy this, they're back in business. If they can't, they're dead next turn. I would be genuinely surprised if they're... Uh, Mox Amber deck had Eidolon of the Great Rebel in it. Okay, yeah, Wear Tear is definitely the type of thing they could have. So I can opt now and get the extra trigger off Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, so yeah, I am actually going to do that. That's worth doing. Uh, yes. I don't think I need this Triome because I have Hinterland Harbor as an untapped land. Strategic planning. I'm going to bottom that. I'm just looking for another Ascendancy or Mentor at this point. They probably did Mulligan to Wear Tear. That's why they went to 5 in this hyper-efficient deck. So I'm taking 5 here. I go to 8. Yeah, Mentor off the top would be insane. Then I can uh, cruise right away, get some tokens into play. I really wish the sideboard had a Deafening Clarion, just as part of the, the wish board. All right, cruise your daddy. All right, that's actually pretty good. So now I have the win again next turn. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ugh. It's it's ugly though. Like I have to. Uh, I'm dead to something like Boros Charm. So five. Yeah, I'm dead to Stomp. Yeah, I actually lose to so many things here. It's not even funny. Yeah, I'm dead to Stomp, Wild Slash, Shock, all of those. Okay, don't kill me, please. Two cards in hand. Yep, yeah, I mean, they had the, the card that they needed. They bought the turn off the first combo and then uh, had me dead for the second round. Like, the, their plan went according to how it's supposed to, so. Yeah, uh, definitely the first uh, super obvious change. Also, uh, that game that was the game where I got super punished by all the check lands, so I would adjust the check land count, lean more into shock lands. Uh, like, that's just going to be more important most of the time 
and I want more removal in this deck, at least part of the wishboard, if not in the main. All right, next round. All right, on the play, round three with a handful of cantrips. I'm going to keep it. I don't have white mana, but I have a lot of ways to find it. All right, no Luris. That's good. Though it didn't help last game. I guess I, I did beat the Luris deck and I lost to the non Luris deck. Though I'm not sure if that's fair to say because I definitely would have lost to the Luris deck if they ever kept a hand with more than one land in it. Oh, a swamp. Thoughtseize is legal in this format, believe it or not. Ketria Triome. That still doesn't make white. Yeah, that doesn't do anything that my hand doesn't already do, so I'm going to ship that. There's my white source. So right now, I could still be, like, basically any blue deck, but as soon as I play Crash Through, I'm either Phoenix or Just Guys Head and Sea. So the... The information is whittling down. I'm not sure how much that really matters, but if they are a Thoughtseize deck, it, it could come up that they get to know when to Thoughtseize because of the way I've... what I've shown them. Though it doesn't matter, like, I'm still going to show it to them. I'm not going to not feed my treasure crews. All right, Mentor. The so double crews. So they could have Quench now. I'm going to lead on strategic planning, feel these cruises before I just run Mentor into every removal spell and every counter spell on the entire planet. Fuck my life. Didn't play around Sensor. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting re uh, reacquainted with this format. I definitely did not play around Sensor. I deserve that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am not going to play any spells this turn. Because I can't play around Sensor. Eventually I'll be able to play around everything except a hard counter with my Treasure Cruises. And I'm not going to play out Mentor without a, a spell to cast immediately. Like, if it gets countered, it gets countered. But if it comes into play, I don't want to lose it to just, like, Doomblade without getting a monk out of it. All right, I'm still going to keep passing. Until they present a threat. Behold. That's a sweet new card from Caldime. This card definitely looks constructed playable to me. So they bottomed both of the cards they saw with Behold. All right, so now it's time to make a move with Mentor. One, two, three, four, five. I can play around Quench. I don't think my life total is going to be super important in this matchup, so I'll play around as many soft counters as I can. If they hard counter it, whatever. If it comes into play, I'm going to get a monk. Alright, been sabotaged. That'll fuel the treasure crews. Crash through. I think I'd rather opt in their end step. Just in case they want to react to it, though I don't expect that they will. And I'll have more information by then. Uh, opt for another opt. It's all just fuel for treasure crews. I don't need a third cruise, because eventually I will run out of stuff to delve. Okay, so now I can actually test their counters in multiple ways. And I'm more interested in Mentor, I think, than Ascendancy. So 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can play Ascendancy and then Mentor and Treasure Cruise. Yeah, I'll go for Ascendancy. So red, blue, white. Because the value this generates is pretty significant. There are also zero basic lands in my entire deck. This Field of Ruin is going to be good. Torrential Gearhawk. Okay, so they tapped out for that. Uh, they're going to get to Sinister Sabotage, my Ascendancy, but then I get to Mentor plus Cruise. And then we'll see how that lines up against this uh, big old Gearhawk. Just got to leave up Blue, Mentor, Cruise. All right, so I assume their deck plays removal spells also, so I don't expect to untap with this mentor. But if I do, they're in trouble. Yeah, no chance. Even the monk though can get it get in there for a lot of damage, the way my deck is constructed. So I'm not going to just trade it off with Skierhawk. Oh, hello, hello. Right, let's play that same turn again. Uh, red, white, and I want to leave a green source up in case I find Awakening. So, blue. I guess I don't really need white anymore. This, this is a better blue source to use. All right, another sabotage. Okie dokie. All right, now green mana doesn't matter as much anymore. Anticipate. I'm going to be able to cruise again this turn. Uh, Sylvan Awakening. Uh, that could actually just be like a lethal smash. At some point. Hope they don't have Spell Pierce. That is legal in the format. Okay. Um, five, six, seven, eight. Not even close. Uh, no. All right, so they have four cards left in their hand. I'm at four. Block Thwain would kill them if they activated it, so that's just a swamp right now. Uh-oh. Ooh, hardcast Shark Typhoon. What a maniac. That is almost always wrong to do. I'm just saying. Okay, that makes it a lot better looking. Uh, though, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, they might be dead to my lands here. Okay, so I'm going to tap I'm, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 attackers. That'll all be at least two twos, and yeah, they're, they're actually just dead. Okie dokie. Um, oh, and this gives the lands haste, so I don't even need to tap my mana confluence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh wait, was I was I one short? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm one short. Fuck, I miscounted. Uh can I do anything about this? Um shit 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 shit. 
Oh, uh, Wild Slash actually is worth three damage because of the monk. So three, four, five. Uh, no, they would just block the monk. And these don't get vigilance, do they? No, shit, 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 shit. Really? All right, I fucked this up. I miscounted by one. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> so close. And now I'm dead. Uh, yeah, if I had... Yeah, I just lost track of that. For some reason, I thought I had one more land than I did. Uh, Bay of Wishes for Cyclonic Rift clears the shark and gets in for a little bit of damage. Uh, I'm not sure. There was probably a better line there. Whoops. Okay, so this is definitely one where I pivot into the the tempo deck. Do I leave any combo in? So if I want to bring in these 10 cards, do I want Royal Scions? Yeah, probably. It's got to be what this is for, right? Then uh, Anticipate gets a lot worse. Bay of Wishes also gets a lot worse. Not really what this is about. Oh, Gideon's probably coming in here as well. Yeah, just this, this is the full transformation. Uh, Wild Slash isn't great against their deck, but it also isn't bad. Uh, Crash Through just being a cantrip. Actually, I think Wild Slash is kind of bad. At least compared to most of the cantrips. So Anticipate is... Pretty bad if I'm not digging for any specific combo piece. Like, it's two mana, only puts one card in the graveyard. Yeah, I'm just a different deck now. All right, we have our first transformation. I would, of course, like to play first. Um, Sand is a pretty slow one. I'm going to mulligan this. All right, there's the Sprite Dragon. That's what I'm looking for. So I can turn to Sprite Dragon, get in under Sensor. I'd be really surprised if they still had Fatal Push in their deck right now. There's no green cards in the deck anymore, so I can bottom this Breeding Pool. So let's see if a Sprite Dragon can ranch here. All right, please don't have a fatal push. No easy, no easy removal here. All right, uh, crash through. Anticipate is, in fact, an instant, so if I shock this in, I get all of my things available to me. I think holding up instants is more important than pushing for one extra damage right now. Oh wow, they did still have Eliminate in their deck. I guess that one's more reasonable to have. But I can Anticipate on their end step and then untap and Jim Gideon. Eliminate does hit Mentor, so sure, that's fine. Yeah, if they try to interact with this, I get to slam Gideon. Wow. That was pretty fortunate. Okay, 
Okay, do they have the hero's downfall right away? They did not. That's fortunate also. I'm going to make a knight rather than attack with Gideon. I guess I'm supposed to opt first, because if I found heroic reinforcements, I would have been able to cast it and get in for a whole lot more. Uh, one one shark. I can wild slash that, but I'm not going to do it now. I don't need to do it right away. We're just pressuring Gideon. Interesting. Ooh, quench is a nice one. All right, five five mode. Let's go. So I can wild slash a shark if they have a, a shark that can jump, and I can quench a spell if they have a spell. In a pretty reasonable looking spot here. And I'm in no hurry to wild slash this shark. This is, uh, look at the top X cards. Yeah, so this is just draw two. I'm gonna let that happen. I'm gonna fight over the payoff, not the enabler. Yeah, they have so many lands, though, that if they do find a Hero's Downfall, Quench isn't going to stop it. They can also make a 4-4 Shark at this point. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, so I'm going to pivot to continue making creatures here, and then Red, White... Go for the, the slam. Like, if they have Sinister Sabotage, I can't quench that. Straight up negate, sure. There's, it's pretty likely I could have won if I just went for it that turn. Ooh, Notion Thief. Do I care about that? No. <laughs> Good thing I'm off the combo. Fucking Notion Thief, are you kidding me? Uh, not that that uh, makes me feel much better, because I'm still a deck full of one-mana cantrips. Uh. Alright, I'm going into attack mode here. I want to get this Notion Thief out of play. If they try to jump in with a Gearhulk, I can quench it. They need to produce two blockers here or remove two creatures. Alright, Gideon did it. Because they chose to censor my Anticipate, basically. Alright, now that I've seen... Ocean Thief. I want all my Wild Slashes available. And they did see me pivot. Does that change anything? So Expansion Explosion. I'm unlikely to explode for much, but Expansion can copy a uh, their counterspell and then counter their counterspell with the copy. So this could be just another counterspell in my deck. If I think that's something I want. A Cyclonic Rift can answer a shark. But I don't think that's what I want. I never did show them the quench, did I? I never had to cast that, so that's good. They don't know I have that yet. Plus two, plus though, first strike and trample. Okay, not haste. That's what I was curious about. I have not played with this card in a long time. 
So crash through versus anticipate. I have to cut one card here and I actually do think it's crash through. Or it could just be strategic planning. So like I'm not looking for specific things anymore. I'm just trying to maintain velocity. So now that I've seen this aggro juke, do I juke back? I guess that's the other question. Or is there a middle ground where they have to respect both? Probably not, because this is dead without this, and this is not great without this. So there's probably not a middle ground. It, I'm either in or I'm not. Like, what? just what do I think is the better plan for this matchup? Well, it... That's not true. Uh, it's what do I think they're going to do and how do I respond to it? I I actually think that regardless of how they're going to respond, this is probably still how I want to go into game three. Yeah, because I, I think that their normal plan is just so good against the combo half of the deck that trying to goof around and be like part of a diluted combo deck isn't that good like i think just going straight for the face is going to be the better plan regardless so this is a pretty interesting hand i am on the draw if i hit land drops i'm good do i want to frantically use ops to hit land drops how bad is this if i miss one if i miss one i'm fucked is the answer to that question there are 21 lands in the deck i think yeah 21 lands a lot of them are check lands which mana confluence does not turn on Though curving Mentor into Gideon is pretty strong. I'm actually going to keep this. Let's do it. Like a hand like this is just way better than a six lander, like going the other way. Look at that, got there immediately, and you were worried. I'm just going to opt now so it doesn't get censored. Okay, I'm good. Got my lands all set up. So now Sensor and Eliminate are online. They shocked in the Watery Grave. So I'm going to... Uh, I was about to say I'm not going to give them a target for it. And that's still true. So I'm going to play Steam Vents Tapped. Like paying two life so I can cast Opt without taking one damage is one more damage than I need to take. Yeah, so by not playing the Sprite Dragon, they shocked in this Watery Grave for no reason. That's just two damage that they spent two life basically to stop me from doing anything extra on my turn. Um, I'm actually not going to opt now. All right, this is a, a pretty painful start, but that's what you get for playing a four color deck in Pioneer. So this plays around sensor at least. Plays into removal, but I, th at this point the removal is bait. Um, I'm gonna just deal one. Like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like committing to the extra damage. Uh, like if they pass priority there, waiting for me to pump, so they can get uh, an extra card off of my their removal spell. I just don't have to play into that. I can do one damage and play a little more patiently. Bottom that. Okay, so now they're holding up. Let's just keep taking damage from the mana base. What we're here to do. This one they need to counter, because if it even comes into play, I'm going to get value off it. Yeah, so now in response to the removal spell, I'll opt, and that'll leave something behind at least. Ooh. Didn't have a removal spell. I guess if they have, like, languish, that would be a smooth way to handle that. But if they languish, then I untap and jam Gideon, and they're facing down Gideon again. 
What do you think the chances are they just have nothing and this mentor is going to ranch? Because that's my favorite version of this story. Wow. These cards are just in play still. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I can Wild Slash and Treasure Cruise. Before combat. Oh, maybe I don't want to Treasure Cruise. I guess I want to dig through time because I do know about the Notion Thief. Are there Aether Gusting my Wild Slash? Interesting. Top or bottom? I guess I don't really want that card. Yeah, that can go to the bottom. Uh, so anything I cast right now would play into Sensor. So I'm just going to attack for 5. And if they cast, like, Eliminate. But they would have Eliminate by now if they had it. Like, they're giving me a bunch of extra monks for no reason. So I can dig through time in their end step and make them react with their own mana on their own turn and then untap and go for Gideon. Or I could just dig right now where they probably don't have something they can do about this. I guess unless they have Spell Pierce. All right, uh, heroic reinforcements, two sprite dragons. I think I want sprite dragon and anticipate. Or maybe it's sprite dragon and heroic reinforcements. Maybe it's just two stripe sprite dragons. I want to maintain pressure here. Uh, like they need to answer this board. I think anticipate actually splits the difference the best. Like, they need to answer Mentor and all its monks this turn. They need a Languish or uh, some Sweeper. If they don't, they just lose. But if they do, I can follow up with Sprite Dragon plus Gideon or whatever and have still have pressure. All right. Yeah, one for one removal after three monks have already been made is not how you beat Monastery Mentor. Based on the mana they're holding up, I would suspect negate, so I'm not going to go for Gideon. So blue, actually, no green cards in the deck. This is a better blue source. Blue, red. Crash through. And anticipate. Crash through, anticipate. Uh, there's another crash through. Yeah, that looks pretty good right now because it is a lethal attack. And it doesn't matter if they counter it. They need a removal spell just to be alive. I'm getting in for 16. So they can anticipate to go to 1. Or uh, eliminate to go to 1. Alright, Brazen Borrower also counts. So they can Brazen Borrower to go to 1. And then they're facing down 3 lethal threats. And my hand is full of gas. This juke has been really good. Uh, I'm I'm glad we got a, a matchup where that's the right call to, to make the switch. This has paid off really well. I'm getting languished. Nope, okay. I don't think there's a 2 or 3 mana spell that can save them from this board. Like this being a 4-4, four, four, like even like any of the 3 mana, all creatures get minus 2, minus 2. Uh, sweeper is not good enough. All right, juked him. Next round. And I'm on the play in round 4 against another Luris deck. Uh, I have a bunch of cantrips set up here. I'm going to keep this. 
I'm going to lead on the Rockrin Triome. And getting my mana under me is more important than necessarily cantripping on turn one. So I don't have either half of the combo right now. That is all going to have to happen. Oh, okay. This is not the burn deck. This is the uh, the Croxa deck. All right, that wasn't a great mill with Stitcher Supplier, so I'll take that. All right, let's opt. Okay, good, 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 good. I do want that. And then I'm going to shock this in and crash through right now too. So I need to find a Sylvan Awakening and a green, or I have green. So I need to find Sylvan Awakening uh, to be able to go off when it's time. Finding the second Ascendancy is like not the best, but it's also not the worst because uh, they they do play discard spells. Dreadhorde Arcanist, hell of a magic card. As a primarily legacy player, I'm kind of on tilt right now that I have to play against this card, but it's fine. All right, so white, blue, red. All right, so I'm gonna get this in play right now, uh, start the looting process. That's gonna draw me more cards over time than the crashing through right now to try to move ahead is. It's going to feed the graveyard for Delve. As long as I don't die before that happens. Like, they can attack with Dreadhorde, uh, Flashback Village Rights, Sack the Stitcher Supplier, which will mill three again. Or just uh, go into Crocs of Town. All right, I mean, my hand's pretty redundant at this point. The Crash Through is the best card in the hand. So that is probably the right card to Thought Seize. Though Mentor could be a problem for them, too. If I just rip a land, play Mentor, and then... Crash through. Okay, cool. They took the Mentor, which is fine with me, because I actually wanted the Crash through the most. So Crash through plus loot will put two cards in my graveyard. Uh, that'll be five, six, seven. If I find a land anywhere in there or a second one mana spell, I can dig or cruise next turn. Oh, they can Thought Seize again. That's pretty good. Instead of Village Rights. All right, yeah. Let's see if they remember or realize that the crash through is the important part here or if they take the second ascendancy ah uh, dreadhorde arcanist i hate this card i don't generally like hate magic cards even ones that get banned like underworld breach pretty cool death right shaman we had some good times together but dreadhorde arcanist i just don't like <laughs> fuck dreadhorde arcanist look at this Dreadhorde Arcanist, 1-3. Why? Why are you a 1-3? Okay, uh, I'm going to crash through. All right, loot. There's a green source. I actually do want that. Uh, and I'm going to have... So, can I get to Treasure Cruise this turn? Uh... Oh, the Thought Seas did put extra cards in my graveyard so four five six oh yeah i can actually cruise right now if i discard the wild slash yeah that's fine deal and then uh one two three four five six seven eight I'm likely going to discard the steam vents. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm likely to find lands off this treasure cruise. Mon Sylvan Awakening. I didn't find Awakening. Just found a bunch more cantrips. Another turn of double thought seizing could be pretty rough. This is a wizard. Uh, I don't think this deck plays Wizards Lightning, though. The strategic planning plus Awakening gets me to dig through time uh, pretty much all by itself. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, yeah, that goes straight to dig through time. 
a Kroxa. I think discarding Anticipate. Anticipate is the worst card in this hand. And my whole hand is spells, so Kroxa doesn't get the extra three damage at least. But Kroxa is likely to arrive next turn. Just in play. Here to party. If I top deck... Oh wow, interesting. They thought dealing one damage is worth more than filling their graveyard. Huh. I am genuinely surprised by that. Oh, they had one in hand anyway. Okay, yeah, they could do both. That's fine. That makes sense. All right, there's the fourth land. So Croxa is arriving next turn. And they mailed another village rights. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, still no Thoughtseize. Sylvan Awakening for the win. Okay, fine. So... I think I want to slow roll this opt. So I'm going to lead on strategic planning. I don't need a second ascendancy. But there's the awakening. I'll take it. And then I can dig at instant speed. Is there any reason to dig main phase? I don't think so. All right, I just hope they don't have a thought seize. Yeah, there's not one in the graveyard right now, because if they have thought seize with the Dreadhorde Arcanist, they can strip the dig and then strip the awakening. And like, even if I respond with dig, uh, then they can just take whatever I find off the dig. I would need to find three awakenings for that to be a good deal. All right, so blue, blue, dig through time. Gonna respond to the discard with this, just have as much information as possible. Don't actually want mentor, that's not important here. Wild slash anticipate opt. Okay, so I think I want opt and do I need a land? I don't even think I need a land. Opt and Wild Slash, probably. Though Anticipate does keep the party going better than Opt does. Okay. I'll take these and just hope to all of the, the various gods in the sky that when they attack and flashback village rights, they don't find a Thoughtseize. I'm going to discard Fae of Wishes. That's funny. It gave me the choice to discard Granted instead of Fae of Wishes. Nice motive. All right, no Thoughtseize. Let's go. Even if they find Thoughtseize, I do have opt in the end step which gets three more looks and then i can uh, yeah, i mean it doesn't look great but i did dig through time so i know a big chunk of the bottom of my deck is not sylvan awakening there are two mana confluences in the mix here too so this isn't exactly pain free oh they didn't cast it nice Okay, uh, so we've done it, I think. All right, so blue, blue, green, because I don't need to tap this right away. 
Blue, blue, green, Sylvan Awakening. And I discard Day of Wishes because it doesn't matter. All of these are cantrips. All right. Uh, red, blue. Opt. I'm going to stop tapping the mana confluences now because it's not going to matter. Ooh. All right, discard this anticipate. I'm digging through time now. Wild Slash. Bottom that. It just doesn't matter. Blue, blue. Red. Yeah, I'm not sure how we can lose from here. Discard Confluence. Reload. Blue, blue, blue. Yeah, this, I'm just clicking at this point. Uh, we have definitely gone off. So I can. Cur it's currently lethal. I want to go super lethal just in case they have some surprise for me. Though so my lands are indestructible, so I don't know what the surprise could be. Uh, one of these taps for white, right? Yeah, maybe I'll just get mentor into play because it doesn't hurt. Hello, Monastery Mentor. Got a little extra cushion for the push in here. Yes. This may be casting Mentor just ate up my chest clock, but I don't think that matters. All right, yeah, they're, they're just scooping it up to that. All right. So we're playing against a discard deck now, which makes me nervous as a combo deck, though I don't think that our tempo deck is going to be great against this deck either. Though, if they do pivot into a... If they just like cut all their removal and pivot into some anti-combo strat where maybe they have like graveyard hate uh this this is one of the better decks in pioneer i do know that from just like seeing twitter posts and stuff though i, I am not super up on the format so i'm not sure exactly what they're able to pivot into um wild slash doesn't line up well against their deck i don't want to kill stitcher supplier and i can't kill dreadhorde arcanist or Croxa. It does kill Luris, but that doesn't happen until way later. Um, I think I am going to try to juke. So Sprite Dragons. All right, so the Wild Slashes are a maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll revisit those. Uh, if I'm go going face anyway, they might be helpful. Uh, the quenches is is quench something I want. Uh, and Cyclonic Rift does buy time again, significant time against both Croxa and Dreadhorde Arcanist. So anticipate is a lot worse here. Do I want some slashes back in over the anticipates? Uh, Fae of Wishes actually actively bad here. So Fae of Wishes out, Wild Slashes back in just to maintain my density of one mana spells for my uh, prowess triggers. And Royal Scions.
And like I guess I probably want this card in if I'm on the plan. Um Not sure I'm in love with Quench actually. Okay. This is the deck I'm gonna submit. Yeah, I just don't like how exposed the uh the main plan is to Thoughtseize. You can play or is Veil of Summer banned in this format? I don't actually know the answer to that off the top of my head. Uh, but the version I played long ago had Veil of Summer in it. I don't know if that card is still legal or not. So opponent qu quickly went from 6 to 5. Uh, they're thinking about their 5. Hopefully they just like aggressively mulliganed for a Thoughtseize to break up my combo or like uh, for some way to fight Jeskai Ascendancy because if that is what they did, they're going to be disappointed. All right, Thoughtseize, probably going to strip the Sprite Dragon. I just got this fistful of Delve spells. If I can fuel these, I'll be all right. If not, I'll be in trouble. Oh, there's, well, there's Gideon in my hand that can't make white mana, so that's that's cool. They're on. They did model five. I hope I can take advantage of that. Do they have the Arcanist? Please just crocs at me. Young Peasy. All right. So Wild Slash is in my deck. That's not it though. All right, yeah, I am gonna hold up Quench. Yeah, this Pyromancer is actually super dangerous. Like, I can overpower it. I have more cards in hand, and Monastery Mentor is just a more powerful card. But they had it in play early, and if they can just, like, start sacking uh, Elemental Tokens to... Is that Colagon's Command? If they can sack Elemental Tokens to Village Rights, that they get to start going off. I'd love to draw a White Source or a Wild Slash. Strategic planning, also not bad. All right, white source, I'll take it. Um, I think I do want to pay the life because I want to cycle Ketria Triome if they don't make me do anything else. Because Gideon also can outpace a... Okay, I'm actually... I welcome Kroxa. Fuel my graveyard, get me closer to these delve spells. I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna get rid of dig through time. Wait, 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 wait. Now dig through time is an instant, so I'll hold on to that and discard treasure cruise. Like being able to pass the turn and end step dig, untap, do what I want to do. That sounds like a better play pattern given the the texture of this particular game. Normally against Thoughtseize decks, I'd rather have Cruise than Dig, but because they mulled to 5 and they're not exactly coming out of the gates here. Okay, Strategic Planning. That's good stuff. Hopefully this will find me the White Source. Yeah, Mana Confluence, I'll take it. So I can Gideon next turn, I can Quench this turn. Like, if their last card in hand is a land and they try to go for Croxa, I can quench that, untap, jam Gideon. That's also six cards in the graveyard for Dig if they just don't do anything. But yeah, they have the land, so they're likely to go for Croxa here. Just hope it's not too late. I'm at 10. I'm going to take two from... Oh, wow, they didn't go for Croxa. Yeah, I'll dig. It's a pretty easy call. It's a wild slash, so that's good. And monastery mentor. Yeah, that actually looks like way better than what I was planning. It's way better than just Gideon. So 
The second mentor is pretty exciting. And wild slash young peasy. I oh. Uh, no, I'm not going to shock this in because, like, I think I just have to outmuscle Croxa with Mentor. And I'm trying to think of why they would not have played Croxa last turn, and it's probably because they have a spell in their hand. It might be Colagon's command. And if I use Wild Slash to destroy Young PZ and make trigger Mentor, then I can't use this mana to quench anyway, so I just take two damage for no reason. I think it's more likely that I'm going to be happy with this. Oh, they didn't have enough cards to escape Croxa. <laughs> they only have four other cards and they need five, so that's a good reason not to do it. Also a good reason not to kill Young Pyromancer right away. In most of the removal in this format, the red removal anyway, deals two damage. It's like Shock, Wild Slash, Stomp. So... Uh, Colagon's command. Feed the swarm. Destroy target creature enchantment. You lose life equal to its mana cost. Okay. So I do have a spell here. They get their token, but they are hellbent and they can't crocs of this turn. So I can mentor plus quench next turn. Untap with uh, five mana. I will not block Stitcher Supplier. I don't think. No, that's not where this fight is. Not yet, anyway. Right, backup mentor. So if they draw an untapped land, they can crox the through quench. If they go for Luris, I can quench Luris. Like, I could quench Croxa, then quench Luris over the next several turns. Okay, that's fine. They can strip the Gideon, but I still have these quenches for the Croxa. So they'll probably end up just putting Luris in hand this turn, because there's no reason to go for Croxa, unless they're just trying to work through my hand. If they attack with Stitcher Supplier this time, I'll block with Mentor, because it's not a trade. I just get to eat it for free. With the Mana Confluence here, uh, I feel like I should... Or they... No, they're, they're going for Luris. Wow, they're just going for Croxa? Just fuck it, YOLO. All right, I'll quench it with these quenches you just saw. All right, so, I mean, the Stitcher Supplier can reload, and if they draw a land, they get away around the quench, so this might be okay going long. But if I draw a Delve Spell or a Cantrip, start going wide with Mentor, it's not going to matter. But that's not what I wanted. So I will just pass the turn here. Yeah, it, it's weird that they didn't attack with Stitcher Supplier. Oh, that was a good draw. Okay, so they can fame from the graveyard. They can Crocs to this turn. Uh, if they drew Thoughtseize land, exactly Thoughtseize land off village rights, they can get Croxy into play this turn and put me to three. Still think just wishing for Luris would be a better play here. But it looks like they want to jam another Croxa into another quench. All right, deck, it's time for a treasure cruise. Even just opt, opt would be insane, really. Asking for treasure cruise is a little greedy. Something to make my monks bigger than this elemental. 
A spell, please. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. All right. Uh, well. We're going to attack. I got to get their life total low here. I wish this could have been a bigger hit, but what are you going to do? The Quench is still good. The Crox is several cards away from going off. Again, I'll Quench anything they put on the stack, even if they can pay the two, because the Mentor trigger at this point, and once they have six mana, they can afford anything. Oh, okay. Actually, this is perfect. Now I'm actually going to hit a Croxa, because this is going to fuel them up. They're going to go for Croxa. Third Croxa, third Quench. And boom, once again. That's all the Quenches I brought in. I brought in three of them. Oh, and they're just scooping to that. They don't even want to keep playing. Uh, all right, so I would have cycled that. And church. Okay, yeah, they were dead. They knew they were dead. All right, three and one, playing for the four one. On to the last round. On the play again against another Lyris deck. I'm going to keep this. I got cantrips, creatures. This is a pretty solid curve as far as things go. Um, If they are that Rakdos deck... I don't want to shock in Wild Slash if they're... I guess I don't want to shock in Wild Slash regardless. So I'm just going to play Steam Fence Tapped. And here the check land is actually going to be pretty good. Because I can play Steam Fence Tapped and then play Rootbound Crag and have Wild Slash and Opt ready. Uh, without taking any damage. Ooh. I don't think Mutagenic Growth is legal in this format, so I'm just going to kill this thing right now before it wakes up. And I can opt next turn when I have more information about what I need to do. Blue Spear, yep. Full Scar Mage, okay. Yeah, if we're going to play against three Luris decks in a league, I want Deafening Clarions in the main. Uh, do I want this land? I don't think so. Okay, now I need to be moving forward. Yep, there it is. White, red, blue. Okay, so that's set up for the future. Investment in my future. Let's hope I live that long. Having two prowess creatures is pretty scary. That represents a lot of potential damage. Oh, yikes. I was saying two is scary, and here is number three. And this one is a wizard, so wizard's lightning. Wow, GERD for battle. Uh, that's a lot of damage. I'm just at nine. Okay. So I think I want to anticipate first. Yes. Uh, shit. That is not a blue source. Um, so I want to discard. I don't think I'm getting another turn, honestly. Like, it's just not going to happen. So I'll discard Mentor. All right, Mana Confluence is a blue source. Oh, so there's the Sylvan Awakening. I guess I have to take that and just hope that I both A, don't die, and B, top deck, A, land, or one drop. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, any burn spell kills me. Any pump spell also kills me. I mean, holding up this red, and they've already seen a wild slash, maybe they'll respect that and just pump the brakes a little. I'm also just dead to Boros Charm. Okay. There's a chance. So untapped land or one mana spell both win the game here. Come on, deck. Fuck. I've never been so mad to draw Monastery Mentor. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, there's no zero cost card I can draw here. I think I'm just dead. 
uh, if these were just in the opposite order. Uh, no, I'm dead. Okay. That sucks. That was close. Very close. All right. Um, I mean, Cyclonic Rift does can buy a little bit of time, especially if they're using things like GERD for battle that uh, build up advantage over time rather than just pump spells. So that might be just another point of interaction with the board I'm interested in. Uh, anticipate is the, the worst card there. And I'm not going to do anything else. All right, so mana is set up, have the Awakening, have a Wild Slash. I'm going to keep this. Need to find an Ascendancy. Yeah, I might just Strategic Planning on turn two. I guess it depends on what they do turn one. A card like Guard for Battle on Curve invalidates Wild Slash. Yeah, maybe I'll just play my Hallowed Fountain tapped and Wild Slash. But if they don't have a one drop, I'll go Mana Confluence. Strategic planning. Yeah, me over here, like, if they don't have a one drop, lol. Uh, okay, so that lets me double spell anyway, so I am gonna... So am I gonna tap this mana confluence more than two times over the course of this game? The answer is probably. So I'm gonna do the Hallowed Fountain, shock that in. And just pay up front rather than pay slowly over time with this. I, I want this to be the last land I play in a matchup like this. Like surprise green source for Sylvan Awakening. Let's go. Danto Vanguard. That card is indestructible some amount of the time. Anticipate. Yeah, I think I just want to jam Mentor. Uh, yeah. They saw me discard a Mentor to Ascendancy last game, so they could just have a removal spell here, or they could just pump their thing and ignore it. But if I can start making Monks, that'll buy me so much time. Gerd. Yep, they're ready to battle. So that's currently... Oh my god. Reckless Rage deals 4 damage to target creature you don't control and 2 damage to target creature you do control. Alright, yep. Absolutely browned. Taking 8 damage. Uh, don't have a 1 drop to pair with this, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we are going to get run over. They have 1 card in hand. They're going to draw for their turn. So this is 6 if I don't block. And then I only get to activate Mana Confluence twice. I don't think I can possibly win a game where I block here. And I'm unlikely to win a game where I don't block. So I'm not going to block. Alright, I'm at 2. Dead to any spell. Alright, there's that. And also that. Okay. Very, very, very dead. Um, so strategic planning first. Yeah, this is going to be way too slow. There's the ascendancy again, a turn too late. I'm going to take sulfur falls because that can give me a chance at casting another spell this turn. Like, if I find Wild Slash, there might be a world where I get to play another turn. All right, didn't even find it. Doesn't matter. Yeah, so they get to cast Reckless Rage from the Graveyard, killing one of my creatures, and they have too many attackers anyway. So, yep. Run over. All right, yeah, so... Got run over by... Boros decks in both of our losses, so Def Defining Clarion's coming into this deck. 
Uh, I want to lean on Shocklands more than the uh, the Checklands, or at least think about how they line up a little more. And just having Breeding Pool and Clifftop Retreat in the same deck, and uh, Rootbound Crag plus Hallowed Fountain, just having so many Checkland pairs that don't uh, see the the dual lands we do play, not not gonna not ideal in a deck that needs to curve out. So I want Deafening Clarion in the deck, and I want uh, to fix this mana. Uh, I'm not going to do that here on the video, but the updated list in the video description should be my final draft based on that one round. So thanks for watching. This was a lot of fun. Uh, this deck seems pretty good, but it does need to answer the hyper-aggressive decks in the format. And I was really impressed by the juke in the the one and a half matchups where it mattered. Like that was a lot of fun to just be a different deck post board. So thanks for watching. Richard, thanks for the deck. Everyone, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.